It's Morgan and Teresa. And we're going to dive back into Super Mario Maker 2. This time, we're actually going to go under the hood with one of the levels that was created for the Invitational that happened a few days ago. And uh, we're taking a look at uh, the course here in play mode. But uh, where do you want to get a start of, Morgan? Yeah, so this is uh, the course that if you guys watched the Super Mario Maker Invitational, if you didn't, check it out. Oh, we've got that up on our uh, Nintendo YouTube. But this is the course that we played in the first round. So all the contestants played it. And uh, this course was uh, all the courses for the Invitational created by folks in the Treehouse, which I'm uh, lucky to be a member of. And uh, I was one of those folks. But actually, a gentleman named Ethan Dill created this course. But I helped play test it quite a bit. So I feel, uh, I feel like I have the authority to talk about it behind the scenes. So I'm just playing through the start. It's a, the start's pretty simple. We've got a couple question mark blocks. We've got a super mushroom there. We've got a, a classic, very large fish. Classic yeah. fish, <laughs> fish in a box gag there. Give me that super mushroom. <laughs> And then a slope. We had to have a slope right out of the gate. And then an exclamation mark block, uh, which you can see that there's no way to hit it from underneath, so I need to ground pound it. And right there, that's how I would get out of this area. But like I said, we're not here to play through this course necessarily. We're going to get under the hood. So let's hop into maker mode. And one thing right off the bat, I'm going to tap the right thumbstick here. And I can actually zoom out into this view mode, which is really cool for sort of when you're making and uh, you know, hopping between making and playing, getting sort of a bird's eye view of her course. So really simple course right here uh, at the start. Like I said, not a whole lot going on. Um, so let's zoom back in here. Uh, I'm going to hop into this. Just going to show off this fish in the box. Go ahead and grab that out. Obviously, like in Mario Maker, to put an enemy in a, in a you can uh, just slide it into the question mark block. But whereas you would change an enemy status by shaking it in Mario Maker, and this time uh, you actually just tap and hold. And that will give me uh, all of my options there. So you can see that one already has a mushroom on there. I'm going to go ahead and add wings to it. Uh, I don't know, why not a parachute also? Get back in there. <laughs> and these context-specific menus are something that you'll get when you place enemies, other course parts. It's really handy if you don't quite remember off the top of your head what options you have for a particular part instead of having to uh, use a little bit of trial and error. You just tap and hold, see that menu, and all of your options are going to be laid out right there. I'm going to change that to a fire flower for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Um, so we actually also had some Twitter polls uh, about this course. Maybe you guys saw that, maybe you did not. We had people vote on what uh, we're going to add to this course because one of the things about this course is that we didn't make it super hard because we wanted the players to get through it pretty quickly mm. um, without dying too much. So uh, before I add the clear pipes, though, I'm going to show off really quickly how this exclamation part block works. Um, so let me just put a pipe there so I can stand on it. So if I were underneath it, it would dole out one at a time. And again, if I'm on top, it would dole out all at once. And you can see when I'm in maker mode that uh, I'm able to control what exactly doles out. So I could, instead of what we're seeing there, I could make it a cool kind of a staircase. And what's interesting with this course part, on top of the fact that you can make yourself some really interesting platforms for Mario to jump along, you can actually do some interesting things with those blocks as they extend, pushing something else in the environment to a different location, possibly even blocking your way if you're not careful. So there's a lot of creativity as far as how you path that object. I'm actually going to take this thing all the way to the top. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which, maybe not all the way, but it just feels really good. Check this out. And I'm going to actually need to get out of this course. So let's move that pipe that I need to right there. That should work. Uh, I'm a sucker for aesthetic, so I have to fill this in even though it's not critical. And I'm going to use a lot of ground blocks. So you can see on the top of my uh, all of my course elements and parts at the top, that's sort of filling in what I've used most recently. But I can tap and hold, and that pins that to my toolbar. Uh, so I will now have ground blocks uh, whenever I need them. Fill that in, make that look nice. That's incredibly handy, especially if you're um, trying to get to something really quickly and you're yep. reusing uh, that item. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and again, I'm just hopping minus to hop between make and play. If you're familiar with Modern Maker, you know that. But if not, uh, very important. So let's just make sure that that works. Yep, that'll work. That's good. Nice. All right. And now it's time to add what the winner of our Twitter poll was. We had three options for this one. So poll one. Yeah, poll one. We, I had the option of adding boom, boom. Clear pipe or a bully. Uh, I did not expect clear pipe to win, but it did. So let's add some clear pipes. Um, you can see I'm hopping into my. Uh, I tapped this. A uh, little magnifying glass. Magnifying there. glass, and that gives me these um, different menus. Uh, I can sort of hop right and left between. I've got items, enemies. I've got gizmos, and you can see 
Actually, something I really like is that someone who works in localization, we actually can see the names of all the parts as you're selecting them. Like the, if you're not quite sure what to call it, it'll just tell you right there. Yeah, and I love this dial system. It's so user friendly and accessible, and you visually see what you're selecting. And there's that clear pipe I'd like right there. So, I had this idea. I was actually talking to Ethan back in the treehouse this morning about what to do with clear pipes because, again, I didn't necessarily expect it to win. And what I'm going to do is actually, so check this out. So I've got this clear pipe sort of surrounding uh, the exclamation part block. I'm going to get rid of these Goombas for now because I don't need those guys around. And I'm going to take a Spiny and set him on top of that block that I need to get to. Let's see what happens now if I go into play mode. So now this spiny is like... It's a little like, dangerous. It's his own personal roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. So I, now to hit that block, I actually need to... Oh, oh nice yeah. work. Um, but why have just a regular size spiny when you could have a... Let me tap that guy. I can make him a big guy. But why? I think that'll still work. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That poor little guy's kind of getting a little dizzy in there. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, let's actually wipe out this clear pipe. I promise there's a reason I'm doing this. Actually, let me pin that clear pipe, too, so I have it. So let's actually add two. Whoa. Well, it's interesting that we showed off during our first segment with Super Mario Maker 2 as well, on top of being able to use these clear pipes to get yourself around, get enemies around. You can actually toss fireballs in there as well. So it really is worth experimenting with this course part. There's some really yeah. interesting things you can do as far as so getting you know a whole bunch of stuff moving in a course at one time. I'm actually going to go back to my original plan because I actually liked how that felt. And yeah, I'd l I want to show off that, uh, that fireball you just mentioned. So uh, what I'm going to do now, so actually this looks like it's totally playable. Uh, I should be, I've already tested that going up to the pipe. Uh, let me just zoom out. Uh, we'll, oop, we can see another section of the course. Don't mind that. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that I later. think it's actually playable right now. So let me, I'm going to actually tap, uh, not tap uh, minus, but I'm going to press and hold minus. And that'll allow me to play the course from the start as if it were brand new, uh, which is important for getting the timing right of everything sort of loading into the course properly. So let's go ahead and grab that fireball we mentioned. Slide down. And now I could work on that timing if I want, or I think I can just go like this. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought they, added flair. I thought they might take him out, but I think they actually have to be in this. I think to take him out, they might have to hit at the same time. So, you know what? Let's get out of here. This is already too crazy. Maybe <laughs> well, I didn't right. need these fireballs after all, but it works. Iteration is what Super Mario Maker is all about. Yeah. So, you trial and error, you see how things work. And that was actually a big part of the development process of the invitational courses. Folks in Treehouse working on them, adjusting them, but then you always need fresh eyes to try them out and see, okay, how's this working oh, man. as we far play as tested, difficulty curve? We played tested these courses so many times. So right away, this, you drop into the second part of the course, and this is kind of where the invitation really got exciting because the players would pop out of this and they'd have an immediate left or right choice. And if they were paying attention to that first exclamation mark block, the reason that we made you ground pound it so you couldn't hit it from the bottom is that so if you're paying attention, you would immediately start doing this to advance more quickly. But if you were just to tap the bottom, it suddenly becomes a lot trickier and... Um, Although Abdallah won the in Mario Maker Invitational, the Dragon Feeny actually had the fastest time on the first course. And the re I went back and looked at the video, the replay of her run, and the reason that she made up about, I think she beat him by about 30 seconds, is on this section, she immediately started ground pounding. She didn't miss a beat, remembering that you can ground pound to get up this section uh, more quickly. That's right. I remember and, this. And not that he didn't do that as well, but um, uh, she just really took straight to it. And... The players that didn't complete this section, Yellow Killer B and the Completionist, uh, they actually didn't quite get up this section as quickly as you can see. I did find it really interesting that everybody took the right-hand path. You oh, gave them a choose-your-own-adventure situation. Yeah. I don't think anybody so right there, went that's left how, first. That's how I would have gotten to the pipe. I'm intentionally falling, I swear, so that I can show the other side. The other side is a little trickier. It actually is deceivingly easy at first. But once you get up here, you can see that we've got these blinking blocks. And those blinking blocks don't require any kind of... I can't even show them. I said it was easy to get to them, but I couldn't even get to them. So these blinking blocks are just sort of blinking in and out of the course on a regular timer. You can hear the sound cue, and then you've got to do it quick enough to do. Yeah, this was definitely a challenging area for the invitational. And then we've got some sideways, sideways. And those actually can kill you. I think some people watching the stream, nobody died on those, and they were like, will they hurt you? They will if they pin you right against the wall. Yeah. Uh, so... 
this is actually a pretty challenging course, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, how can we make this course more accessible to people who maybe we actually saw some of our competitors really couldn't get up this very easily. So I want to show how quickly or how simple a uh, change you can make and change the mechanics only by changing a uh, course theme. So for this, this is in the sub area of the uh, course. I'm going to change it to forest. And of course, vertical sub areas being something else that's new to Super Mario Maker 2, it is really interesting the way you can build up these courses when you have so much more verticality to play with. Yeah, and you can even see that it says, it just told me there, uh, if you switch to forest, you can add water. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. So over here to the left, I've got this water level. And at the bottom, I can, I, I can start both the starting, the start of the water and then the high, that dotted one is sort of the high water mark. I'm going to take that all the way to the top. Uh, not up into the next area, just to the this area. And I've also got this arrow, so I can tap it. If I tap that, it'll the water will go to that point and then all the way back down. I just want it to fill the room completely. And if I tap and hold, I can change the speed at which the water will fill. I'm going to go, let's see how double speed works. And what this is going to do is, once I come into this room, I can obviously start, if I'm sort of going for speed, I could start... Oh, I'm, oh, already, I'm already behind. Be a I'm already yeah. behind. I'm already behind. So what's nice is it can actually fill the room. So a better player might be able to sort of stay ahead of the water. There we go. Now I can get a little a little lead on the water. Oh no, I'm still too slow. So but this is allowing a player that couldn't handle these jumps to much more slowly, but quite easily beat the course, but not nearly as quickly as somebody who uh, had those more advanced. Uh, platforming skills. And that's just a really neat way that you can sort of use these new... No, 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 no. <laughs> Back to swimming. No, 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 no. Uh, and I just love that because, you know, if we'd had this water in this for the Invitational, like, it would have probably been too easy, but certainly no one would have gotten bogged down uh, right there. Yeah, it definitely makes it possible for you to make something where if somebody wants to have a sort of time challenge and have a race, they could get through that much faster, but nobody's going to be left behind entirely. Yeah. This is the Koopa Troopa car section, which I'm just going to... The car is so crazy. People are going to have so much fun making courses for this. We had to play test this thing so much to make it so the player had to use the car. Uh, we didn't want them to be able to cheat by jumping out of the car. And I'm just going to rip right through it. But so one thing I did want to show nice. off... So I'm going to hop right back over to it. The car actually can break, so... I made that look easy because I've played it several times. But if you don't quite understand how the car works, you could say right here. Oh, so right there, those spikes would actually take me out. If I had lost my car at some point. So if you had bumped it into, say, like the ground environment. Yeah. So we have a reset door here. So if, if you had lost your car here, you could hop back in. And That's actually one place where the trampolines are really useful. If you want to build a course and have surfaces the uh, car's not going to get damaged on, it'll bounce safely off trampolines. Yeah. And so this car, let me find a wall I can crash into. We took out most of the walls, actually, so that you can't break the car because we didn't want the players to get bogged down. But if I go to the end here... There you go. You can see a little bit of the car coming off, off each time you hit show it. Off, show off those three hit points. And now the P-switch that was triggered way over to the right, you actually can't quite get through this without the car, which was uh, by design. Because I mean, we wanted the car to, the coupe, yeah, we could try. I mean, somebody probably could, but we wanted you to sort of need the car. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's hop through there since I already did that once. All right, and uh, I didn't have the car in this moment, but the car cannot go into pipes. You could take the car into that uh, warp block we just came out of. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, head in this pipe, which I could not have taken the car through, even if I'd wanted to. On the subject of the car, though, I do love that the Koopa Troopa isn't even wearing his shell. He's just chilling out like weekend-style Koopa Troopa, no, and you're like, true. dude, I need your car. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, OK, so this is the next section. This section is really simple. I actually love that the forest theme, what, what it made this section look like. That tree just looks really neat. The background's beautiful, too. And the only way to advance in this section is to climb up here, grab the Super Bell, and turn into Cat Mario. And now that I am Cat Mario, I can, you know, add a whole other new gameplay style uh, mechanic, which is climbing walls. So I could quickly climb out of here. But this section was so sort of basic that we, again, uh, had a Twitter poll asking, uh, how could we make this more exciting? Uh, we had three options for this one. If you guys voted, you saw that we could uh, have Hop Chops, Piranha Creeper, or Bonsai Bill. And Piranha Creeper won, which is exciting for me because it fits the aesthetic of this forest theme so well. Uh, so Piranha Creepers 
similar to the exclamation mark blocks, you kind of control, you as the creator, control like how they, how they dole out. So I'm gonna put this guy over here, have him kind of come over and peek at me just as I come out of the pipe. I'm gonna actually do the same thing over here. A little bit different on that one. Oops, I didn't quite attach him. There we go. So let's go back in the pipe. Because I want to see how these look when I actually load in the way you would. So suddenly this area is a lot more dangerous. And they actually kind of, I kind of like that they actually kind of guide me. I'm like, uh, this tree feels safe. Let's go up there. And then from here, I could actually, I think, if I time it right, I can probably jump over him and then up the wall. Oh, I didn't quite oh, make it. That's tight. Or I could just take him Ouch. out. You can, you can kill these things, too. But if I tap and hold, you can also do blue uh, piranha creepers. What those do is extend out to where you made them end and just kind of hang out. And I and think the they, sound, it's almost like they're sleeping. Yeah. You hear a little snoring sound? <laughs> so let's change those back to purple. It's a little bit more exciting, I think. I'm going to make this one not so difficult. Since one thing I was doing, we'll have it. I should be able to now climb up, grab the cat suit, wait for him to go down, climb up, ooh, and get past there. Nice. Next section, I'm not going to edit this section. I'm just going to get past it. Really cool mechanic here, though. You have to wait for the snake block to fill over, to cover up. Oh, no. This was See? the part that also uh, got the players at the Invitational, too. It was a little bit challenging to traverse yeah, uh, both you, sides. Yeah, because if I jump to the left, I'll hit those springs. But if I wait for the snake block, I can I'm really and messing this up. I think up. it was interesting, since the purpose of this was a speedrun competition, you gave them two options, the blue and the green snake block. So the yeah. green one is going to move a little bit more slowly, going to give you a bit more time to land those jumps, but if you really want to go for a faster for it, time and you want to take it. the extra risk, you go with the blue side, it's going to go faster for you. Yep. Exactly. Oh, no. No. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? No. I'm stubbornly going to actually do it instead of cheating. Wait for it. Cover those up and over and up and over. Okay. Okay. I'm cheating. I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ethan. Just for the sake of time, we're, we're, we're going to yeah. allow more. Go back and watch the invitation. We'll see how uh, the players made it through that. Because we have a really important thing to do with this last section. So the last section has these two jumps, kind of challenging jumps, up to the big finish. Hit that. On off switch actually changes the trajectory of those. And where that would take me is I'd go into that exclamation mark block, it would drop me at the goal pole, and I'm done. But that's a very simple ending. And we wanted to have a boss battle. Yeah, you have a lot of open air to play with down there as well. It seems like it'd be worthwhile to take some advantage yeah. of that. So mm -hmm. as quick as I can, I'm going to get out of the way there. I'm actually going to use this warp block. And this is where we get into here. our final poll result. Yep. I'm going to do some, I love it because I can do this zoomed out mode and I can do some hardcore sort of bird's eye view editing. I can't add new parts when I'm in this zoomed out mode, but I can grab blocks like this and then copy those to help fill these big swaths of course really quickly, which is, whoop, bye bye. And I don't even have to worry that I'm grabbing the exact amount I want. I'm just sort of, you know, it'll fill in what's not filled in. Okay, I've got my, that's there. I've got a nice big open space. Zoom back in so I can actually change parts. We're gonna tap these guys in and out. Quickly give me some ground here. Make it look nice and pretty. All right, so I want you to actually have to defeat our boss. So first of all, who are we gonna add? We had three choices. So our Twitter poll result, I believe, we want a big Meowser. So maybe here, winged as well. Here's Meowser. Here is big Meowser. Nice. Oh here is big flying Meowser. 
And I actually want you to have to defeat him. So I'm going to change this to a key warp block. And of course, we're going to need a key to activate that. So let's grab that, drop it in, attach it to Meowzer. And if I'm going to defeat Meowzer, I'm going to need some help. So I'm going to give myself uh, a pipe with some to make sure I have a pers persistent supply of fire flowers. And I would love to see more of that Koopa Troopa card. So let's give Big Meowser a few buddies. Um, I might, I might, I might be putting those for my own benefit, not Bowser. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see how this works. Oh, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Wake up, dude. Not anymore. Wake up. Give me one of those cars. Oh my. Oh. So Meowser, when he's got wings, has some really interesting attack patterns as well. So we might see him go through a few of those here. You will never. I'm crashing one car into another. There he goes. Not today! <laughs> I need another car. Uh, is he going to do his ability? There, there we there go. There it is. No, I got a car, sir. Careful! I need another fire flower. Where is it? Yes. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. He's a little burly. I will yeah, drive. he is. Oh no! Oh, grab fire flower! Fire flower, please! Go back! Oh no! no! Oh my gosh! I was about to say, Morgan, you're running out of cars, but I know, I know. you just ran out of lives. I think we have time for one more try, though. <laughs> one more try. They're gonna cut me off the stream, and I'm just gonna be playing this on the stage persistently for the next like hour and ruin the whole stream. <laughs> oh, it's absolute madness and chaos. Uh. Get him! What's up now? Nice. Be the other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna be smart. Get my. Oh. Oh, okay. he's following. Oh, oh my here. gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out of my car. Back in my car. Back in my car. Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no! Back in my car. He also has fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> my car has no wheel in the front. <laughs> it's still good. You got three wheels. You can make this work with three wheels. Oh, oh my gosh. Everything's fine. Oh my gosh, Morgan. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just everything's on fire, but it's fine. There you go. Okay, I believe in you. You can do this with fireballs. But this is actually without the car. It's actually giving me a chance to show off. This is what's cool about the 3D World style is it's 2D 3D World, but there's all these sort of effects that... Oh yes. Nice. yes! Good job. Got my key. <laughs> you got a Give little me that. firework display too. Yes! <laughs> yes! Sorry, well done, I got really sir. excited. <laughs> no, dude, that was awesome. We're probably way behind now, but I don't care. I That's defeated right. Big Flying Meowser. Uh, hopefully that showed you guys a way that we took a course that we designed to be a little bit easier. Uh, maybe not a lot of enemies. We added a boss fight. Uh, we made one of those parts that's really tricky, easier to, easier to get up. Showed off some of the maker tools. Yeah, I could go on all day, but I'm probably out of time. And we also made this interactive because of the polls, so we had yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks if you guys voted on the polls. And thanks if you watched the... Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational. If you want to see this course in action, go back and check that out. And some other really fun courses as well that yeah. were in there. The finale is pretty, yes. pretty intense. Uh, and that is about all the time we've got today. But uh, Morgan, Teresa, thanks so much for coming up and hanging out. Yeah. Uh, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Please stay tuned. We're going to be coming back in a real quick break with some Damon Tech Machina. So please stay tuned. <laughs>